Hi guys, this is Crossy of Eclipse Gaming TV and very exciting times for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is my 100th video and uh, very, very fitting, I think, that it comes out on the release day of Football Manager 2015. And I'm going to introduce you today uh, my first series, which is my How I Saved Manchester United series. Now, this isn't going to be a main series. It's not going to be a one where I run every single game for you guys, not unless you ask for it anyway, and probably won't push past the first season either. But I thought it would be a nice one to get started on because uh, for the coming weekend, I don't know how much recording time I'm going to get and we probably won't see the Gillingham series starting right away. Uh, so apologies for that, but hopefully this will be a nice uh, introduction for you. A couple of early thoughts, um, just about the game in general. At the moment, I don't like the new layout at all. This is quite a common thing for me with uh, Football Manager games. They change the layout. I'm not a fan of it. It takes me a while to get used to it. And then after a while, a few weeks, for example, I'm flying on it like uh, it was never changed. Uh, so there's that. Um, also, a couple of new features that are involved in it. One, you can choose the type of manager that you are, either a, a tracksuit manager where your stats are more uh, angled towards the training side of things, etc. Um, or a... You know, stereotypical suit wearing manager where you're uh, more interested in the finances and the sponsorship and that sort of thing and um, transfer dealings um, I've leaned myself just towards the um, track suit side of things and um, developing players etc is where I'd uh, sort of see myself being I'd want to be on the training ground every day if I was actually a football manager but also pay attention to the figures so um, I've leaned slightly in the uh, tracksuit side of things and as far as how things are looking for the season I was thinking I was going to swoop in make a lot of good signings with about 200 million pounds worth of uh, transfer budget to play with it turns out actually that the game drops me in at the point where quite a lot of the money's already been spent I did have 60 million to play with but that didn't go to plan at all uh, the players I wanted to get I couldn't mainly because they weren't that interested in coming to us for a start and with a few signings that I did make it smashed a huge chunk out the transfer budget and I wasn't able to uh, make the improvements that I was expecting so I uh, had this little dream of this series being a great success me spending 150 200 million in the transfer market um, winning the Premier League maybe a cup or two along the way I'm not feeling quite so confident but you never know uh, what I will show you is what I've done so far and we'll start with the uh, transfer screen. Uh, so players that have uh, gone out to begin with, Anders Lindegaard, um, goalkeeper, has uh, disappeared as long as as well has uh, Ben Amos. Sorry, Jesse Lingard and um, this guy here I can't even pronounce. They've all uh, left the club on free transfers as well. Uh, just offloaded Anderson for whatever money I could get for him. Two point five million gone to West Ham. Uh, Phil Jones and Darren Fletcher have both moved to uh, Tottenham Hotspur for just under £15 million. Uh, so they've paid back uh, around about half what I've spent for uh, Yang Vertonghen. Who I'll uh, show you his stats really quickly. Um, one thing that we have definitely learned from this season is that Manchester United's defence needed some bolstering. Um, tried to get uh, Matt Hummels, who had no interest in coming to us. Um, a few options I looked at. Phil Jagielka. Um... Raphael Varane uh, to throw a couple of names in the mix problem I've got with both of those and this is a little bit baffling when you look at the stats for the players I would have considered them to be upgrades um, on Johnny Evans who's actually the best centre back at the club or, or was before I made the signings and uh, that just doesn't seem to add up to me and another disappointing thing is that Phil Jones and uh, Chris Smalling um, are both sort of weaker in the stats than I would have uh, liked to have been which is why I've offloaded Phil Jones um, Stephen Corker was another player that I was looking at that, again, is considered to be um, a weaker player in comparison. And I just feel like some of the stats have been a little off there. I and mean, Phil Jones has got hammered in his uh, current ability and potential ability. And I don't think that's because he hasn't got it. I think he's just not been fit. Um, so I don't think that's quite... Uh, gone to plan. Uh, another player I'll show you here, Inigo Martinez, 23-year-old, um, signed him um, from Real Sociedad. Uh, but the... Oh, wrong player, sorry. 
But uh, he's going to be playing uh, alongside Vertonghen. So we have uh, rebuilt completely. 23-year-old and 27-year-old with those two. Uh, very good tackling. Um, very good long shots rating, actually. I don't know how often he'll get to uh, use that. Uh, but heading, marking, both up there already. And uh, will only improve in time. And interestingly, for quite a young player, very, very good mental stats, which is great. Um, composure, 14. Concentration, would have liked that to be a little higher. But that will uh, no doubt improve. Uh, show you Vertonghen as well, because I didn't look at the stats. 15 marking, 16 heading, uh, good passing, very good tackling again. Um, and very good mental stats, composure 18, concentration 13. So I'm um, feeling fairly confident with those two. Um, also, who I've signed uh, in defensive midfield, Nigel de Jong. Um, and de Jong, he's one of those players that I've always been a huge fan of. I know he spends far too much time kicking players up in the air and getting yellow cards, but he's also very effective, I think. And uh, as we're looking to shore up the defence, which uh, we've seen from how this season has gone and the season before that really needs help, we've got him in there to uh, play that role. And I'm pretty much hoping once Michael Carrick comes back and becomes fit, uh, we can slot him into the um, central midfield role and be that creative force for us. And that's if one of the other players that we've got kicking around can't cement their place there. Um, also, Danny Ings. Now... <laughs> With Rooney, Van Persie and Falcao, adding another player into attack was a little bit of an ambitious one. And the main reason I've gone for that is I couldn't really bring in anyone else, um, despite my best efforts. I was thinking for creative force and a short-term option, I was going to try and get Xabi. But by the time you convinced him to take kind of a 50% pay cut... Uh, the amount of money I was having to pay an agent and signing on fees pretty much made it a no-go. Uh, missed out on Sammy Kadira, who just didn't want to come to us, whatever money I gave him, and uh, he's plump for Chelsea. Um, yeah, that was quite a common issue, actually, is finding players that actually wanted to come and then trying to sign anyone from the likes of Chelsea, etc. It just wasn't happening. So I haven't been able to do as much as I would have liked, and the players that were brought in in the summer, I'm not sure they really fit my system um, quite so much. Um, one matter being one of those that was brought in, kind of a panic buy, I think, um, for David Moyes, is going to struggle to fit into this system simply because we haven't got enough players to fill the roles, and I'm not going to end up playing a number 10. So that's something I might have to uh, address in January. Um, and the Herrera, because I'm not using too much um, as far as central midfielders, which is still a weak area that I haven't managed to strengthen. Um, I'm not sure how much of a look-in he's going to get. Marcos Rojo, how much of a look-in will he get as well? Uh, it's going to be tough because we've signed two new centre-backs. Um, again, if you look at uh, his stats, which are, again, not too bad, but he's lacking in a few areas... Um, across the board and is a weaker player compared to what we've got so he's probably going to end up being a backup for us so a backup that's earning nearly 100 grand a week might I add so um, there's a few signings that have been made um, sort of ahead of this point that I wouldn't have made myself and it's left me in a, a little bit of a mess I would say um, also got some fitness concerns, as we can see. Um, Johnny Evans, Raphael, Luke Shaw and Michael Carrick all coming back from injury. Um, we've got Rooney out for about a month as well. He got cropped in uh, pre-season. And uh, a few players that I maybe would have liked to have used uh, are going to end up sitting on the bench. Uh, Yanazai, I'm planning to give him quite an extended run in the side uh, on the uh, right wing. And this is a formation that I'm probably going to roll with maybe consider throwing De Jong next to Fellaini, but I'm not sure. Uh, but at the moment, he's going to sit in and protect, and we've got a more uh, attacking formation uh, ahead of him. Um, so let me run you through who we got. So we've got Falcao up top. Uh, he did score a hat-trick in pre-season and is in uh, pretty decent form. Uh, so looking forward to seeing that in action. Danny Ings is going to get uh, a, a league debut because of the fitness of Robin Van Persie and Rooney being cropped. Uh, Di Maria and Valencia, as Adnan Yanazai has got a few fitness concerns. Uh, so that's the plan for the time being. And um, we got one matter who might well sub in on that right wing. I'm not sure. Um, Di Maria 
and one player who was signed in the summer that I'm extremely excited about. Uh, across the back, we got our two centre backs, uh, Vertonghen and uh, Inigo Martinez, with uh, Smalling and Daly Blind, and uh, De Jong in front protecting with uh, David De Gea. Uh, so, what I'm going to do for this first part is I'll uh, show you how we get on in our uh, opening game, and uh, from that point, we'll uh, see how we go. Uh, scoring off against Tottenham, <laughs> may end up facing one or two of our uh, former players here. And uh, this is an interesting a tunnel interview. Uh, let's see. Fairly cagey in the old uh, press conference. So again, a fairly attacking formation coming in uh, from Tottenham as well, trying to pack the midfield, which might cause us a problem because we've got naff all players in there. Um, we have got uh, Phil Jones, who we're squaring off against, but Darren Fletcher is on the bench. Um, I notice actually very good signing. Uh, they've grabbed uh, Nathaniel Klein as competition for uh, Kyle Walker, and uh, I would personally, on form this season, be playing Klein ahead of Walker, but be interesting to see what happens there uh, right so let's get to this okay so team talk let's see what we've got oh we've got sound I wanted to turn that off so sound off we don't need that and let's speed up this match speed a little bit Paulinho with a uh, long range effort we've seen him bang a few of those in our ambitious ball in behind but they have got in behind Daily Blind And uh, Eric Lamella, a player that's uh, undergone a bit of a uh, rejuvenation during his first season and was talking about being unsettled, didn't want to be there, etc, etc, and uh, how things have transformed. Chris Walling trying to get a foot in. Does get the foot in but can't come away with the ball. Paulinho, long range effort and back of the net. Oh dear. It's not how we want to start 15 minutes in. But no one there. Someone didn't close down. De Jong. It's kind of in that role for a reason. By the way, good ball from Ings up to Falcao. Good inception from Dembele, to be fair, actually. Managed to get back and recover. Falcao lose it around about the halfway spot. They blend well in. Let's see what options have I got. I can give uh, touchline talks. To individual players. Hmm. So has to push forward a bit. Good ball from Martinez. Very creative from the uh, central defender. And Valencia. Oh, off the bar. Taylor Blim well in. Chance rings to get the attack going. Hopeful ball up to Falcao, and that's not going to work. We need to try and get a bit creative. Try and use the midfield a bit. Chance Falcao up and over the top.
Martinez gets away with the book in, but dangerous uh, position for the free kick. Don't have a problem with uh, Tottenham players continuing to shoot from there. Right. It's allowed to step it up. And chance for Di Maria to run at the fullback, and uh, he's able to do that. Beats Carl Walker, whips the ball in, and that is a very dangerous ball. Wow. <laughs> when she starts seeing a few of those, you realise we might be okay this season. Vertonghen caught with a couple of defenders to jump with. Valencia fed. Falcao tries to get on the end of it, but it's catching practice for Lloris. Starting to look a little more threatening now. De Jong well in. That's what we got him in there for. And De Jong again well in. Worried about the amount of space that Lamella's getting. <laughs> and it would be, wouldn't it? Phil Jones. Of all people, Phil Jones unsticks us for the second goal. Right, okay, let's go for it then. Attacking formation, let's just see a goal or two. Lends it to Ings. What can he do with it? Finds Fellaini. Long range effort. Ings to follow up. Widen behind the goal. I feel like we need an extra body in the middle of the park because this just isn't working. Uh, right, so I need to go to advanced tactics unless we can bang one in at this, from this corner. Like that. Going to make it interesting. So Yang Vertonghen, a goal in his league debut. Floating you with the header to Vertonghen. Nice and easy. Uh, right, okay, so that's given us something to play for. Uh, what I'm going to do is push for this. So we'll take De Jong out, throw Matter into the number 10 role. And let's push on, try and get a point or three out of this. Another corner, Matter with the ball in. Ooh, someone got on the end of that. Seems like we're playing too much Route 1 stuff. I don't know where this is coming from. Um, let me put in some team instructions. Go for some short... Actually, yeah. Retain possession. Some shorter passing.
Lynn finds Matter. Good ball in. Looking for Valencia, doesn't find him. Matongan bundled off it, and this is where we get caught on the break. Aaron Lennon, what a ball that is. Ings, nice little header. Valencia pinging it. Oh, Falcao offside, what are you doing? He's got to watch the line, son. Plainly long range effort. Fellaini bunned off the ball by uh, Soldado. He's taken two players on. Well, then Jan Vertonghen in the end. Ah, oh, Falcao. Could have done better with that. A chance for a break. Final minute and a half and Danny Ings has just smacked it open for the best. I don't like that. Well, in Daily Blind, he's done a half decent job at left back. Not done himself any harm with that anyway. And that, unfortunately, is it. Full time. A few positives uh, to look at. Um, in the end, a couple of um, silly goals. I think it was anything, or if anything, I should say. Um, a bit of an issue with tactics because um, Tottenham packed the midfield against us and we just couldn't get hold of the football and were seriously up against it with our uh, lack of midfield. Pretty much had De Jong protecting the uh, front or the back four, I should say. Um, Fellaini, the only real um, midfield player with the uh, attacking front, uh, which I'm hoping is going to work well for us and that we can score one more than the other teams. But by the same token, it has its uh, downsides if you're not putting the ball in the back of the net often enough. Uh, a few positives, though. And we got uh, other players coming back to fitness. Uh, got Luke Shaw. Um, Robin Van Persie will be involved in the next game. Um, Raphael as an option at right back, which gives us a little more uh, going forward. Uh, so still plenty of positives, nothing much to worry about. And I'm feeling fairly confident about Vertonghen and Martinez as my two uh, centre-backs uh, going forward once they, they start to gel with each other. So let's go straight in tell the players I'm not hugely impressed uh, what I'll do for the uh, next part is uh, I'll show you uh, one more game and then uh, we will start to drop more into a uh, every few games we'll have a live one and I'll just play through it in my own time and, and see where we get to and, and how things progress and uh, next series you're also going to see will be the Gillingham series uh, at some point next week if you're watching it live but for the meantime if you've enjoyed this then please give the video a thumbs up if you want to see more FM 2015 action from me and from Eclipse Gaming TV then subscribe to the channel there's lots of good stuff coming up and uh, please give me your comments your feedback uh, early doors things that I can improve on because I've had uh, some very useful feedback back in the past uh, from you guys from the subscribers and viewers uh, so any of those that you can give me hey I'm not going to complain uh, it looks like we've still got some work to do so I'll uh, catch you next time